January 2, 1956, was the day that 29-year-old Jim Elliott had waited for most of his life. He jumped out of bed, dressed as quickly as he could, and got ready for the short flight over the thick Ecuador jungle. Almost three years of jungle ministry, and many hours of planning and praying, had led Jim to this day. Within hours, he, and four other missionaries, would be setting up camp, in the territory of a dangerous and uncivilized Indian tribe, known then as the AUCAs, known now as the Wayadani. The AUCAs had killed all outsiders ever caught in their area. Even though it was dangerous, Jim Elliott had no doubt God wanted him to tell the AUCAs about Jesus. As a little boy growing up in Portland, Oregon, Jim Elliott listened carefully, as visiting missionaries told about life on faraway missions fields. He asked them questions, and dreamed about being a missionary himself someday. It made him sad that, so many people in other countries died without knowing about God. On February 2, 1952, Jim Elliott waved goodbye to his parents, and boarded a ship for the 18-day trip from San Pedro, California to Ecuador, South America. He and his missionary partner, Pete Fleming, first spent a year in Quito learning to speak Spanish. Then they moved to Shandia, a small Indian village to take the place of the retiring missionary. Jim and Pete studied hard to learn the language and fit in. Their hard work paid off. In six months, both were speaking Spanish well enough to move to Shandia. When they arrived in Shandia, they also had to learn the speech of the Quiquas. Three years later, many Quiquas had become faithful Christians. Jim now began to feel it was time to tell the AUCAs about Jesus. Jesus. The AUCAs had killed many Quiquas. They had also killed several workers at an oil company drilling site near their territory. The oil company closed the site because everyone was afraid to work there. Jim knew the only way to stop the AUCAs from killing was to tell them about Jesus. Jim and the four other Ecuador missionaries began to plan a way to show the AUCAs they were friendly. Nate Saint, a missionary supply pilot, came up with a way to lower a bucket, filled with supplies, to people on the ground, while flying above them. He thought, this would be a perfect way to win the trust of the AUCAs, without putting anyone in danger. They began dropping gifts to the AUCAs. They also used an amplifier, to speak out friendly AUCA phrases. After many months, the AUCAs even sent a gift, back up in in the bucket to the plane. Jim and the other missionaries felt the time had come to meet the AUCAs face to face. One day while flying over AUCA territory, Nate Saint spotted a beach that looked long enough to land the plane on. He planned to land there, and the men would build a tree house to stay safe in until friendly contact could be made. The missionaries were flown in one by one, and dropped off, on the AUCA beach. Nate Saint, then flew over the AUCA village, and called for the AUCAs to come to the beach. After four days, an AUCA man and two women appeared. It was not easy for them to understand each other, since the missionaries only knew a few AUCA phrases. They shared a meal with them, and Nate took the man up for a flight in the plane. The missionaries tried to show some sincere friendship, and asked them to bring others next time. For the next two days, the missionaries waited for other AUCAs to return. Finally, on day six, two AUCA women walked out of the jungle. Jim and Pete excitedly jumped in the river, and waded over to them. As they got closer, these women did not appear friendly. Jim and Pete almost immediately heard a terrifying cry behind them. As they turned, they saw a group of AUCA warriors with their spears raised, ready to throw. Jim Elliott reached reached for the gun in his pocket. He had to decide instantly if he should use it. But he knew he couldn't. Each of the missionaries had promised they would not kill an AUCA who did not know Jesus to save himself from being killed. Within seconds, the AUCA warriors threw their spears, killing all the missionaries. Ed McCulley, Roger Uderian, Nate Saint, Pete Fleming and Jim Elliott. 
Late in the afternoon of Sunday, January 8, Elizabeth Elliot, Jim's wife, waited by the two-way radio to hear Nate Saint and his wife discuss how things had gone that day. But there was no call. As evening turned to night, the wives grew worried. They knew the news was not good. The next morning another missionary pilot, flew over the beach, to look for the men. He saw only the badly damaged plane on the beach. News quickly spread around the world about the five missing missionaries. A United States search team went to the beach, found the missionaries' bodies, and buried them. But don't think Operation AUCA ended there, because it didn't. In less than two years, Elizabeth Elliot, her daughter Valerie, and Rachel Saint, Nate's sister, were able to move to the AUCA village. Many AUCAs became Christians. They are now a friendly tribe. Missionaries, including Nate Saint's son, and his family, still live among the AUCAs today. Elizabeth Elliot even helped make a movie about Operation AUCA. UCA, called, Through Gates of Splendor. It showed real-life scenes of the five missionaries on the beach, with the friendly AUCAs. It also included footage of the two years, she and her daughter spent, living in an AUCA village. Elizabeth Elliot wrote in, Shadow of the Almighty. The breadth of Jim's vision is suggested in this entry from the journal. August 9. God just now gave me faith to ask for another young man to go, perhaps not this fall, but soon, to join the ranks in the lowlands of eastern Ecuador. There we must learn. 1. Spanish and Quiqua. 2. Each other. 3. The jungle and independence. And 4. God and God's way of approach to the highland Quiqua. From thence, by his great hand, we must move to the Ecuadorian highlands with several young Indians each, and begin work among the 800,000 highlanders. If God tarries, the natives must be taught to spread southward with the message of the reigning Christ, establishing New Testament groups as they go. Thence the word must go south into Peru and Bolivia. The Quiquas must be reached for God. Enough for policy. Now for prayer and practice. During his life, Jim Elliot longed for more people to become missionaries. In his death, however, he probably inspired more people to go to other countries, to share the love of Jesus than he ever could have in life. Make it real. Questions to make you dig a little deeper, and think a little harder. Jim desired to serve God as a missionary. How do you desire to serve God? Jim chose not to use a gun to protect himself, when attacked by the AUCAs. Why? What would you have done and why? Jim's wife and daughter went to live with the AUCAs, after Jim was killed. Can you imagine choosing to live in the AUCA village, after such tragedy?